Why is it that South Africans wear church uniforms? These are some of the biggest churches in South Africa, and these are their uniforms. And also, why do some South African churchgoers wear military-inspired uniforms? This is every part documentary series, and in this episode, we will focus on South Africa's biggest church, the Zion Christian Church, that has around 8 to 10 million followers. I will be investigating how they came to wear their famous uniform that is easily recognized by most South Africans. In my investigations, I found that the three organizations played a huge role in influencing the ZCC uniform, that is the British Army, the Salvation Army, and Taoist Zionism. Now let's go back to where it all began. Our story begins in the late 1800s, in the Boer Republic or Transvaal province, in the Hannesberg region, the birthplace of Ignatius Engenasile Kanyani, the founding father of the ZCC. He was born in the year 1885, just before the Second Boer War, which was essentially a war between the British and the Boers over gold that was discovered in the Witwatersrand. The war was not only about the battle for gold, but it was also the battle to colonize African natives through religion. For example, the Boers introduced the Dutch Reformed Church. The British brought the Anglican, Methodist, and Free Church of Scotland. And lastly, the Germans established the Lutheran Church. In the Hannesburg region of the Mama Bula clan where Lekanyan was staying, the Germans set up a Lutheran mission station that was called the Puma Berlin Mission Society. It was managed by Karl Norte. Angemesse spent his early childhood in the middle of the Anglo-Boer War. The British eventually won the war in 1902, and immediately thereafter, British missionary Lady Mafella set up an Anglican mission school in Angenasse's village. This is where Angenasse received his early education. As an adult, Angenasse was also exposed to the British in the church he used to attend, called the Free Church of Scotland. There's actually a link between the Scottish and the SEC. ZCC dancers called in Gady were Scottish Celts. <laughs> Lastly, a key figure who deserves to be mentioned in this story is Samuel Mutendi, who was a close friend of Enganase and a founding member of the ZCC. In 1925, Mutendi accompanied Lekanyani to register the ZCC at the Union Buildings. Mutendi established the ZCC in Zimbabwe, formerly known as Rhodesia, and it currently stands as the biggest African-initiated church in Zimbabwe. Before his religious role, Mutendi served as a police officer in the British South Africa Police, a paramilitary organization in Zimbabwe. It is possible that his law enforcement background influenced the ZCC's adoption of a military-style police uniform. Zionism was brought into South Africa by John Alexander Dowie. Although Dowie did not personally come to South Africa, he sent his disciple Daniel Bryan to South Africa in the year 1904 to spread Zionism. Now let's focus more on Dowie. Who was Dowie? Dowie was a charismatic Scottish Australian preacher and leader of the Christian Catholic Apostolic Church who popularized modern Zionism in the late 1800s and early 1900s. He was also part of the Salvation Army, which we will talk about more in detail on the next chapter. Between 1899 and 1901, Dowie acquired private land in Chicago and built what he called Zion City. In the Zion City and during church services, Dowie's church members called the Zion Guards would wear police uniform. Dowie was highly ambitious and had plans to open similar Zion cities throughout the world. So Dawi sent his missionaries to China, Japan, Mexico, India, Australia, and New Zealand. But it was the South African Zion city in Johannesburg that became successful out of all the Zion cities in the world. This is also why Engenas Lekanyani was converted into Zionism by Daniel Bryan, who was Dawi's missionary in charge of the South African Zion city. 
Here's a quick recap on Dawi and Zionism. We know that Dawi sent Daniel Bryan to South Africa in the year 1905. We also know that he had a vision of opening independent Zion cities throughout the world. And also, some of his church members wore police uniform. And lastly, he was also part of the Salvation Army before he formed his own church. The Salvation Army is a British Christian organization founded in 1865 by William Booth and his wife Catherine. In South Africa, at Mahon, whose official title in the Salvation Army was Captain Mahon, left the organization to work with any Zionists such as Edward Lyon of the Zion Apostolic Faith Mission Church and Enge Nasele Kanyan. The Salvation Army described itself as a Protestant Christian church and an international charitable organization headquartered in London, England. Although the Salvation Army is not an official military organization, but they do refer themselves using military positions such as soldiers, officers, and so forth. The central figure between early Zionists and the Salvation Army was Edgar Mahone. He was one of the first people who helped spread Zionism in South Africa. He helped black Zionists set up their own Zion cities in South Africa. He worked closely with Edward Lyon of the ZAFM. And before Enge Nasle Kanyane founded the ZCC, he was a preacher at the ZAFM. In fact, he was the leader of the Transvaal branch. Edgar Mahone was also a good drummer. He led the Salvation Army's brass band, teaching numerous black Zionists how to play in brass bands. Enge Nasi in particular had a deep appreciation for brass music. And even after he founded the ZCC, he desired his son Edward Lekanyane, who was named after Edward Lyon, to lead the ZCC brass band. Edward was not the only one in the family who played in the brass band. His brothers Joseph and Barnabas played as well. Let's now look at the similarities between the ZCC and the Salvation Army. Enge Nasle passed away in 1948, and his son Edward took over the church. Under Edward's leadership, the church saw remarkable growth, expanding from 50,000 followers to 600,000 followers. Today, the ZCC is the largest independent church in Africa, and stands as one of the most significant churches in South Africa, and has wielded considerable influence. Some notable examples of this influence is former ZCC member Frederick Mudise, who went on to establish his own church in 1962 called the IPHC, which is a following of around 2 million members. And like the ZCC, the IPHC members also wear church uniform. There are also other self-sufficient ZCC churches, such as the St. NNS ZCC, which is a breakaway ZCC church founded by NNS's son, Joseph. It is estimated that this church has approximately 5 million members. And finally, as I stated earlier in the first chapter, in Zimbabwe, there is also an independent branch of the ZCC, known as the ZCC Mbungo, which was founded by Samuel Mutendi. <laughs>